So a child star in Daddy Daycare and Parenthood to Harvard student. He's going back to the classroom now in the prequel series, Ted, everyone's favorite raunchy teddy bear. Max Burkholder's here. So what can you tell us about this series? This series is, uh, you know, the classic pairing you know and love. It's John Bennett and his delightfully debaucherous little guy that he wished into existence. Um it's just a little bit earlier than we find them in the movies. The corruption, Ted's corruption of John hasn't fully taken hold yet. There's still some like room for this to be like a good sort of like productive member of society. But uh, I mean, we all know where it ends up. Right. And you take on the role for, that Mark Wahlberg made famous in the movies, John Bennett, as you mentioned. So did you get any tips from Mark and how is it like playing his character prior to what he was going to play? Didn't manage to get any tips from Mark, uh, but it's a super fun character to play. I mean, he's just a lovable goofball jackass idiot. He's just, it's such a fun combination of stuff because you get to still feel like a good guy while you're doing it. You know, he's got a heart. He loves his family. He loves his best friend, but he's just so, he's so dumb. And surely that obviously was not easy for you to play going to Harvard. How do you get yourself in that mindset just playing that dumber character and just stepping aside from real life? Well, I say, you know, me and John actually aren't all that different. Uh, we can both be real idiots about things and just like really dig our heels in unnecessarily uh, when we're definitely wrong about something. Our blind spots are just a little bit different. I can be easily just as, as dumb and stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. And these live action, these hybrid uh, kind of films where there's animation, live action, they a lot of them do it different ways, whether you have someone stand in for the character or whether you just are talking to a ghost or no one there. What was that process like for you with Ted? Yeah, uh, it was the latter. It was a ghost. There was nothing there that I was talking to. Kind of a trip for about the first two weeks. And after then you start to be able to just like see him in space. You can just sort of like fill in the blanks, fill up the gap, fill in the gaps. And like, if I were to just look around the room, I can see him anywhere doing anything at this that's point. All, that's hilarious. So Shirley, you obviously have all the script. You've done all the scenes basically in your head because you know what Seth MacFarlane character Ted is gonna say. What, what were those interactions like between you and Seth? Oh yeah, I mean, it was a godsend having him there on set doing the lines because it's Seth and it's his sense of humor and it's his timing and being able to get that sort of like back and forth effect was really crucial to a lot of the comedy for sure. Um, and if he wasn't there also, there'd be no way to like do any of the improv that we got to do, which was one of my favorite parts about the whole process. Oh, awesome. Um, so you you mentioned improv. What are what are some of these like hints and Easter eggs that people need to look out for if they've seen the previous films? Hints and Easter eggs. Hmm. I mean, there's stuff in there that people who are fans of the original movies uh, are really going to love. You know, there's weed, there's hookers and blow, there's thunder buddies, there's all that stuff. Um, but it very much is its own thing. Like, obviously we know where these guys end up, but it's a new story. It's set in the 90s, we meet the family, yeah. Thanks so much, Max. All seven episodes of TED are available to stream Thursday, January 11th.